Hey everyone, Mark Price at devslopes.com and today we're going to talk about how to get your project uploaded onto GitHub and how to push and pull from that project. So, what you want to do is go to github.com, okay, devslopes is the name of mine, slash devslopes, okay. And once you're logged in, you've created your account, and by the way, you should already have your SSH keys ready to go and uh, uploaded as you as you should have done. Click new repository. Okay, and if the layout of GitHub has changed slightly since this video to now when you're watching it, just find a button that says new repository or something similar and it'll all be the same, or at least uh, remotely the same here. So we're gonna create a repository name. It's also how the URL is gonna be structured. So let's call this um, destroy the world. Why not? Slash destroy the world, okay? And this is the description of your project. I want to build an app that effectively destroys the world. Okay. Is it a public or private? If it's private, you have to pay, of course. Okay, public, anyone can see it, which is fine. I want everyone to know how to destroy the world. This is free public information. Okay. And this is initialize this repository with the readme. Do you want a readme file in here? Uh, most repositories that you're giving away should have a readme file. Uh, any any project should have a readme file, okay? So you can go ahead and do that here, which is fine. And right here, add .git ignore, okay? These are things that you can add to your .git ignore file. And what a .git ignore file is, is a file that allows you to forget things or skip things uh, in your code base. So if I've got some local files in my folder on my computer and I don't want git to track them, they're only there for the purposes of my folder, then I can put it in a git ignore and it will not track it and push it up to the repository. And here's a perfect example. A lot of third party frameworks and tools like such as Firebase uh, and other things, they require that you put an app ID, okay? A very unique app ID. An app ID which you would never ever wanna push to a public repository because then everyone would have it in your account information, very bad thing. So what you might do is have a local script file that has the app ID and you keep it in your folder and your code references it, but you don't push it up to the public repository, okay? And then uh, your app will just feed off of that locally on your computer and your data is safe. So that's a good reason for having a .git ignore file. And I'm not gonna add anything to it right now. We can always do that later. And if you have a license, some type of license uh, for your code, you're giving it out, you can put that in there as well. So this looks good to me. I'm gonna click create repository, okay? And you can actually edit the readme file right here, by the way, in case, in case you didn't know that, you can click edit this file. And this is all in markdown, okay? So you can write whatever you want in here. You have to know how to do markdown. It's really simple, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually really fun too. Such as, you know, this is a heading, okay? And then uh, that all looks good. You can commit those changes, okay? And there you have it. You've got your readme file right here. But that's not what we're looking at. So I'm gonna click my repository again right here. And this is the main setup here. Now, what we've done, what we've done here is we've created a repository, but we haven't necessarily created a project for it yet. Okay? So what we can do is see this HTTPS. You can use this or SSH to clone this project, but we're not gonna be cloning it exactly as, as it says here. What we're gonna do is actually create our own project first, and then we'll get these two syncing to each other. So I'm gonna actually gonna copy this SSH thing here. Just remember that for later. And now let's open up our terminal, and uh, let's go onto the desktop. And then what I'm also gonna do is open up Xcode and create a new project few things here, but basically we're gonna create a project and get it syncing up to our GitHub. So create a new Xcode project, that's great. And single view application is fine. Product name, destroy the world, of course. Looks good to me. And we'll keep this selected, create Git repository on my Mac, okay? This is the equivalent of typing in Git init in the terminal here. So let's go ahead and create this on the desktop which we've done. Okay, now if I CD into destroy the world and I type ls, there's my files, right? Okay, same thing as here, right? Two files, two files, folder and a file. Okay, if I type in git status, we should see some red. 
Oh, uh, we're not going to see anything red just yet because we haven't made any changes yet to this. It's already including the files here. So let's go ahead and open our project again. And let's, let's just play around with it real quick. Let's go into our view controller. And let's just go ahead and print. Okay. Say, hello world. Okay. Now let's go ahead and get status. Okay, there we've got some red. We've modified it, okay? Now, our local Git repository, though, is not talking to our uh, our local, meaning our, yeah, our local is not talking to our remote and our remote's not talking to our local. So how do we do that? Well, there's a command called git remote. And if you type in dash V, it's going to show you all your remote repositories. And right now we have none. Okay. None at all. So we need to add one. So remember how on GitHub, how we copied this SSH link right there. What we're going to do is we're going to add that. So we'll go back to terminal here. We're going to type in git remote add. Okay get remote add and then we got to give it a name. And so let's go ahead and add our remote repository here. And we're going to call our remote repository the origin. Okay, so get remote add origin and then we're going to paste that link there. Okay, so we pasted the link. Now if I type in get remote space dash V, it now shows that I can fetch and push up to that repository. Now remember, make sure your computer is linked. Okay, make sure your computer is linked, your SSH key is linked to GitHub. So now we've got this modified file. So what I can do is I can type in git add dash a, type in git status to see where we are. So it's green, which is great. Now I can git commit dash m and say hello world. Okay, type in git status to see where we are. Great. Now, this is interesting. So if I type in ls, do you see a readme file? No, but we do have that readme file up on GitHub. So we want to pull that down, right? So what we can do is we can type in git pull origin and origin is the name of the remote. Okay. You've named your connection to that date, to that, to that database, to that repository. But we also need to know the, the branch and the branch that we're working on here is master, as you can see right here. Okay. So what we need to do, go back to our terminal is git pull origin master. Okay. And it's going to ask if you want to continue. Yes, we do want to continue. It's permanently added it. Okay. And as you can see here, I actually don't have access because I did not add my SSH key. So let's go ahead and reiterate on that again. So if we go back to GitHub, GitHub SSH, just find the guide right there. And I've already generated one. So all I need to do is grab it, right? So this guy right here, this PB copy, that's all you want to do. Copy that, go to my terminal. Okay, I'm going to put that in there. It's going to copy my SSH key. Now to add it, all I got to do is go to my account settings, SSH keys, and I'm going to add a new SSH key. And we're going to call this Mark Price iMac. Okay, this is my new computer. I haven't added it yet. Okay, I've now added the SSH key, so now I need to put the password in. And it is now added. So now if I go back to my terminal and I do git pull origin master, let's see what happens this time. It pulled it down. But what's going on here? Merge branch master of GitHub, please enter a commit message to explain why this merge is necessary. So we're merging now. Okay, there was code on the repository on remote and there's code locally. And what we've done is we've merged those two together. Now, luckily there's no conflicts. Otherwise it would have told us meaning two lines, uh, two line or the same line of code was changed on, on both, but this is good. And by the way, it opened up your Vim editor on your terminal here. So you have to do, you do have to learn the basics of Vim. Okay. But this is good. I'm just going to press escape and then shift colon X to save and quit. Okay. So we are now merged. Okay. Our, the remote code was pulled down into our local code. So if I do git status, okay, everything is good to go. Now, do, does the remote have our current changes? Let's take a look at that. Let's go ahead and see. GitHub.com slash dev slopes slash destroy the world. No, we still only have the readme file here. So we've pulled down and we've merged, 
okay? When you type in git pull, as you can see right here, what it's doing is it's fetching, fetching from the remote repository. The remote repository is called origin, and the branch that we're fetching from is called master. It's fetching that data down, and then it's also merging, okay? It's taking that fetch and it's merging it in. So actually we could have done it manually. I could have said git fetch origin master, okay? And then I could have said git merge origin master, okay? And then that two steps, that would have been two steps, but I just did it in one. So a poll does git fetch and then a git merge, okay? And there was no conflicts, but we do have my changes that I need to get up to the remote. So now what I can do is I can say git push origin master and has now pushed my changes onto the remote GitHub repository. So if I refresh my page, now you can see that my Xcode project is there. Okay, so what did we do here? Well, we created a repository remotely, and then we created a project locally. We did that two different steps. And so what we had to do is we had to add the remote repository on our local. So I remember how we did git remote add origin. We pasted in the uh, this guy right here. Remember that? Um, so that's how we added our remote repository. But then we had to pull down the changes that the repository already had, merge those in, and then we had to push back our changes. That's how Git works. Okay, someone makes a change, they push it up to the server, and then before you make a change, you pull those changes down, you merge them in, and then you push all the changes back up. Okay, that's how it works all the time. And that's what we did. We could have done it a different way. Okay, and I'm gonna show you that right now. So destroy the world. We're, we, that was one way that we did it. B building both separately and putting them together. Let's create a new repository. Okay, dev slopes. I bet you there's like hundreds of people now like, oh, what new repository did Mark make? Oh, destroy the world, great. I probably think I'm some terrible person now. Okay, so let's do a new repository. Uh, actually, let's do it, excuse me, let's do it a different way. Let's uh, go ahead and create our project first this time. So we're gonna create a new project and this one is gonna be uh, more uh, warm fuzzy. So save the kittens and accept the hairless ones. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, so we'll put that here on the desktop. Boom, so we've got this repository here. Great. Now, what I can do is go back here to my uh, GitHub, create a new repository, right? And we're not gonna initialize it with a readme, okay? Let's just call this save the kittens save the kittens but not the but not the ugly ones okay uh yeah create repository ah look at this because we didn't add a readme and it's an empty repository it's giving us steps now on how to add our code to this repo by the way i keep saying repository but uh the short phrase that you'll hear a lot is repo like my car is getting repoed okay so let's go ahead and go back in our terminal to the folder we just created. So CD uh, save, was it save the kittens, except the hairless ones. All right, so there's our Xcode project. Now GitHub's actually giving us steps now. It's saying do git init. Well, since we did that already in Xcode when we clicked that checkbox, that's already done. Git add readme. Um, we don't really need to, to add that specific file. It's just giving that a recommendation to us. Um, but let's just go ahead and do what it says. Let's make a file change. And so I'm gonna to say touch readme.md. Okay, so we've just created that right here, as you can see. And then it's given us more steps here. It's saying, okay, git add readme. So if I type in git status, okay, it looks like we've got modified data and we've got a readme file. So why not just do git add dash capital A to add everything, command K to clear, git status. Okay, it's all green. We've added those, we're tracking those. And then it says do our first commit. Okay, so git commit dash m first commit. Okay, so that's the next step. And then it's telling us to git remote add origin. Oh, this is just like we did before, except it's giving us the steps these times. So I'm just gonna paste that in here and it's there. Okay, now what? And then it says do git push dash u origin master. Okay, and a dash u just means the upstream Okay, where, where you're pushing to. Um, I didn't add it in, 
We're just, just copy and paste here though. And there we go. So now if I refresh this page, I did what it said. There's our code. Okay. Pretty cool stuff, right? So what have you learned? Okay. So whenever you're creating a new repository or you want to, you want version control in your code, just remember if you're using GitHub, that's a remote repository. Write that down. I have a remote repository on GitHub or Bitbucket. I have a local repository on my computer. Whenever I want to make a change, I'll get at it and get committed. And once you've committed those changes before you push, and I hope you're writing all this down, before you push, you pull down from remote, okay? So git pull origin. Origin is just what we called the name of our remote. You could have called it anything. You could have said git pull remote, git pull my remote repository, but we just called ours origin. It's very common to use origin. Git remote, or excuse me, git pull origin, and then the name of the branch, which in our case is master, whatever branch you wanna pull data from. You pull it into your code, which does what? It does a fetch, grabs the changes, and then it merges them in. So two commands, git fetch and git merge, and it'll merge those changes in. And once your changes are merged into your code, then you can push all of those changes, including yours and the ones you just pulled down, back to the remote repository by doing git push origin, then the name of the branch. So git push origin master in our case. And that's how it works. That's how the changes go back and forth. So what I want you to do, if this is confusing to you, watch this video a few times, write notes on these very specific steps, okay? Uh, and after you've done it a few times, it'll start to make a lot of sense. So that's kind of the nuts and bolts of working with remote and local repositories, uh, specifically GitHub. Uh, Bitbucket would have been very similar in the, the things that you did, in fact, all this stuff right here that you did here wouldn't even change except for the address of the repository it would be different. So really cool stuff. That's it for now. Mark Price at devslopes.com. See you next time. And remember to get your free live help, go to devslopes.com and click on the chat room. We have thousands of students in there helping each other out. Also click on the forums. This is where you can search for answers to your code problems and you can also post your own issues. So head on over now.